I always say when people ask me kung gaano katagal maging doctor, sinasabi ko na lang, let us not talk the years, my friend. Sobrang tagal, Besh. Ayoko na magpulang. Wala pa lang katapos. I'm Faith Conanan, a medical doctor from the Philippines. So for today's episode, chika-chika muna tayo about that road to MD. Kano ba talaga katagal maging doctor sa Pinas? So if you wanna know more, please keep on watching. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. So let's get to it! Personally, when asked kung kailan ko daw na-realize na gusto ko maging doctor, my mom said that at the age of 2 years old, sinabi ko daw na gusto ko na maging doctor. Lakas naman ang fighting spirit natin, Besh. 2 years old pa lang, gusto na maging doctor. So now, let me count the years. So the first one is the kindergarten, pre-elementary, or yung mga saling food sa days natin. So, yun yung pinaka-first step to that road to MD. So, ito yung mga panahon daw na gamit ko lang ay headband at saka lapis as my stethoscope with my teddy bears as my patients o kaya yung mga sister ko daw, sabi ng mom ko. So, yun yung first graduation. The next one will be our elementary or yung primary school year natin na 6 years, after which, second graduation na. After that, yung high school, which in our case was only 4 years, pero dahil sa K-12 ngayon, nagiging um, 6 years na siya. So after that, third graduation. So the next step into getting that MD is yung college years or yung iba yung pinatawag nila na pre-med. So may mga courses na 4 years, may mga courses na 5 years. So courses such as Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Pharmacy, Biology, Medical Technology, yung mga Red Tech, 4 years sila. However, yung mga um, BS um, Physical Therapy, o kaya yung mga engineering courses which are also included or can also be accepted as pre-med courses, it will take you 5 years to finish or get a degree. Inclusive of which are hospital exposures o kaya naman yung mga internship or related learning experiences that you will have depending on the course that you will choose. Ang step na to yung pinaka so near yet so far to that MD. So after surviving your college degree, which is your fourth graduation, you will now be entering the med school proper. Sa med school proper, there are two options for you to take. So if other students want to take the BS courses or the pre-med courses, other students take the straight programs to medical school. So what am I talking about? So instead of Taking the usual route, which is having a pre-med course and going to med school proper, they will have to take a straight program into the medical school. So, instead of having 8 to 9 years, it will be shortened into 6 or 7 years. So, there are two schools that offer these uh, straight programs into medicine. So, the first one is the Intermed of the University of the Philippines, which requires you to take a 7-year medical school curriculum instead of 8 to 9 years, which will lead you to having that medical degree. The other one is the LipMed program of the University of Santa Tomas, which offers a 6-year course, including 2 years of basic health sciences courses, and then the 4-year medical school proper. So instead of having 8 to 9 years, one will be able to have that degree. In 6 years, you will take the LipMed program of USD, and 7 years if you will take the InterMed program of the UP. Going back, in my case, I took a pre-med course or a BS course and then I pursued medicine. So th there will be three years of med school proper in school. So they taught us the basic and clinical subjects. We also have our preceptorials in the hospitals and laboratory exposures during those three years. After which, before graduating, you will have to take one year of clerkship. So, I still remember a time na sinabihan kami na hindi daw lahat kami magiging doctors. 
So those words uh, really challenged our batch back then and it helped us try harder that we will be able to finish med school and be able to graduate as medical doctors. During those time, I also attested and witnessed that the words that Dr. Elazagi said were correct. And I quote, Medicine is not for the intelligent and not for the proud. It is for the humble and the hardworking ones. So still in the medical school proper, you will be having your one year of clerkship or hospital exposure prior your graduation as medical doctors. So yun na yung fifth graduation. You will be rotating in different clinical subjects and you will be exposed to real patients under the supervisions of your senior interns and your residents. So, I have a lot of stories to tell and experiences to share about leadership. If you want to know more of them, please comment down below and I will make a separate video for it. So my resounding motto during that time is to always do my best, learn from my mentors, and listen to what my seniors tell me or uh, teach me. But actually, yung pinaka-realistic talaga na motto namin is gapang lang ng gapang, lunok lang ng lunok, at this too shall pass. So, just make every opportunity that will come and make the most out of that experience because I never knew now my experience or no one will ever wish to repeat or go back to clerkship again, I swear. Really, once in a lifetime opportunity lang siya at one of the most unforgettable experience siya in the life of a doctor. So, just do your best and learn the best that you can. So finally, after that 3 years of med school and 1 year of clerkship, you will finally have the 2 letters after your name. So finally, after 3 years of med school and 1 year of clerkship, you will finally have those 2 letters after your name. You're finally a medical doctor. So yun na yung makailang graduation na ba tayo? Pre-Ellen, elementary, high school, pre-med, like 5th graduation. After graduation, finally you have that two letters after your name, your medical doctor or you have that medical degree. Pero hindi ka pa pwede mag-practice as doctor for you will have to take your postgraduate internship before taking the boards. So, paano siya? So, during clerkship, you are a junior intern. After graduation, for your postgraduate internship, you will now be called as a senior intern. So, another year of clinical rotations in the different basic and clinical subjects. So, the hospital where you will be rotating will depend on the APMC or the Association of Philippine Medical Colleges. So, there's a process called matching depending on your choices at kung saan kanila na match na hospital. So, mantra ko naman during this time is this. Here's to the people who strive to work hard in their way to success and to being the best version of themselves every day. So after a year of postgraduate internship, you will be having another graduation, sixth graduation, from the hospital kung saan ka na match. So usually, internship happens from July 1 to July 1 of the following year. The next step for you in having that MD is the board examination. So, the Philippine Licensure Examination is being held every September and March. So, in our case, uh, we took the September board examination. So, after that, finally, you have your license as medical doctors and for your 7th graduation, you'll be having your oath taking at PICC, the dream of everyone. So during my board examination days, what really kept me going that time was that there's nothing you can't learn. You just have to do it. You just have to read and read and read. The more you read, the more you will be able to stock information in your memory and pray that those information will come out in the boards. Pero kapag sukong-suko na talaga ako, ang sinasabi ko na lang is to... Lord, sana po yung mga naaral ko yun yung lumabas sa board exam. Nag-pray na lang ako for divine intervention. <laughs> Mali ba yun? So, I just want to share with you this blog post I made during clerkship as we were preparing for the comprehensive examination before graduation. So, as early as that time, I was already claiming it and, um, uh, Putting into my heart that I will graduate on time, pass the comprehensive examination, be able to finish internship, and um, hopefully be able to 
have that license in September 2019. So yeah, looking back with uh, God's help and God's uh, provision of strength for me and through divine intervention, I was able to pass the licensure examination in September 2019. Before ending this, I just would like to share with you what our Cree consultant and the head of our ophthalmology department, Dr. Torres, once said. He said that things of great value are worth the sacrifice. So indeed, medicine is a continuous learning process. It never ends. And I believe that what makes our consultants and fellow physicians great and efficient in treating and saving the lives of patients every day. So to you who want to pursue medicine in the future, I just would like to tell you that if it is truly in your heart, then go for it. If you really want it, then nothing will be impossible. We always say it will never be easy, but uh, we assure you that at the end, it will be worth it. So then, what happens after passing the board examination as licensed MD? So there are basically two options for you to take. So you could work as a moonlighter or a general practitioner, or you could already go straight into residency training. If you want me to share with you my experience about moonlighting, please comment down below and I will make a separate video. For so that's it for this episode. I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, please comment down below. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. See you on my next video. Thanks for watching. Stay safe everyone. Bye.